What's up? I'm Triple Shoot. Welcome to the only FPS optimization guide you'll need for Space Marine 2. In this video, I'll cover all of the in-game options, but I won't touch on Windows optimization at all. Instead, down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides, as well as anything else to get some extra performance from the game. Starting off from the very top of the in-game options, on the Video tab, we'll quickly run through these display options. If you'd like to see my reasoning behind all of these different options, you'll find a full FPS breakdown between every option on the screen here, so that you can better understand why I'm choosing what I'm choosing. Anyways, the display section. Borderless and full screen are good options here. I'd recommend choosing full screen, especially on Windows 10, for better input latency. Display resolution should match your display, and of course the render resolution should be set to native throughout general gameplay. But if you choose to use DLSS, FSR2, or, well, just stay away from TAA, you can crank this down to quality or balance, where you'll see a good improvement in FPS with almost no impact on visual quality. That being said, moving to performance, you'll see a slight hit, and all the way to ultra performance, textures will just melt away. It's not really the best option. Performance is as high as I would go here with this render resolution option if you have FSR2 or DLSS selected. Otherwise, choose balanced for the best middle ground between performance and visual quality. I wouldn't recommend setting this to dynamic and choosing an FPS target here, as it just doesn't really seem to work all that well. You'll get a more consistent experience by choosing a solid option for your render resolution here. That being said, this game does seem pretty heavily CPU limited or some other kind of engine limitation, where I don't see too much of a difference between these options with about a 1-2% to FPS gain. So choose what you choose here. Then VSync, definitely have this turned off unless you're getting screen tearing. Then Moving down to motion blur, you can set this between default low and off, although what you choose here doesn't really matter. The game's still going to have motion blur no matter what you choose, maybe it's a bug, but of course setting it to off will slightly reduce the amount of motion blur that you get. I'd usually recommend to leave your FPS unlimited, which is good, especially for testing, but if you're going to be streaming and recording and this game's eating your entire system, cap this down to 60 FPS or 90, whatever FPS you're getting, minus a few, just to make sure there's a bit of your system left for handling things in the back. Background. Then moving down to quality, here's where things get pretty interesting. The quality preset, you can see a huge difference between low and medium, even in this image here, and through the rest of these options, there's a very small visual difference, if not really any at all. This effect is actually mirrored in game. I just recommend working from medium and changing your options from here as anything higher. You don't really gain too much, but you do happen to lose some FPS. And of course, low just misses out on too much. So I'd not really recommend choosing that. We'll work around from medium. First of all, texture filtering. This mainly has an effect on these grates and things like that. And I'd recommend leaving this as high as possible as there's almost no FPS difference. Then texture resolution. This completely depends on how much VRAM you have as that's where the textures will be loaded. If you have a four gig graphics card, set this down to low. If you have a four to five, medium, five to six, high, and anything more gigabytes and VRAM, set this all the way up to ultra for the best looking game. This does have a huge difference visually pretty much everywhere. And if you have the VRAM to handle the higher options, crank it up as it's just a free quality gain for practically no FPS cost. Then shadows, there's a very slight difference between these that mostly has to do with blur. You're not really going to be caring about shadows too much, have the set down to low. But of course, the step up to medium, at least in my case, didn't really have an FPS impact. So, well, set this to whatever you please. Then screen space ambient occlusion, there's a big visual difference between off and default. Moving up to high, there's again a very slight difference. And FPS-wise, there's practically no difference here at all. I'd leave this up on high, otherwise default off is just losing too much information. Keep it on if possible. Screen space reflections between off and default, there's a huge visual difference. Moving up too high, it just gets a little bit sharper, but you don't really lose any performance between off and default. You actually lose a ton of performance moving up too high at around, I don't know, 10 to 12 percent. So it's definitely worth having this at default, at highest, and of course at lowest, as there's no performance difference. Then volumetrics. While you may think there's a slight difference between these, you'd see this kind of thing everywhere with fog and smoke and even clouds. But for the very small visual impact, you'd expect a equally small FPS impact as well. Well, moving from medium to high, you can expect to lose 10% of your FPS. Medium and low, there's almost no FPS difference, so I'd leave it probably at low just for good luck. Then effects. This has practically no visual impact besides maybe a little bit of fog here and there. 
but it mostly has to do with the amount of blood on your character after a fight. Blood does seem to fade as time goes on. High has the most on you, medium, a bit less, and off or low, there's practically nothing left on you after a fight. Just for immersion, I'd recommend medium at minimum here, but FPS-wise, there's no difference between these, so crank it up to high if you like more gore. Moving down to details, there's a very small difference, mostly to do with ground textures, as you can see here. However, if I didn't snap between these on the screen here, or you snapped between it and game, you'd really not notice the difference for the most part. I'd probably have it on medium here as you get most of the little shadows that you would lose otherwise on low and the higher options, well, don't really add too much. FPS wise, however, there's practically no difference. I assume this mostly has to do with the amount of VRAM you have in your system. If you have six to eight gigs, crank it all the way up to ultra and you can leave it there at practically no FPS cost. Then finally, cloth simulation. This is obviously a CPU limited effect. And the difference between these is that the higher your option is here, the more your cape goes whoosh as you run around for lack of a better word. As it is a CPU limited effect, you're practically not going to see any performance difference. Yeah, from my testing, there's almost no difference as I think I'm mostly GPU limited in this game more than anything. With our optimized settings here on a 3080 Ti, how much performance can you expect? Well, if we apply our changes here and hop back into the game, the main menu improved in quality at least. In the game itself, it looks pretty fantastic, especially because of that texture resolution option and texture filtering. And I'm getting a solid, let's see, well, 70-ish FPS here at 2K with DLSS on balance. The game looks fantastic. And unfortunately, as low as you crank it, you're probably still going to be GPU limited anyway. So while well, it kind of is what it is, you need a relatively good system in order to play this thing. Anyways, that's really it for this quick optimization guide. Again, you'll see a full breakdown of every option in the game linked down below, as well as other methods to get way more performance out of your PC, as you'll really need it to play a game like this, especially if you don't have the newest of the new hardware. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.